one of the things that we're looking at in open source marketing, one of the systems that we are developing is an alternative client service model which is set up to challenge the, the traditional agency model. I've got a huge problem with the agency model. The client takes all the risk. They have to pay big invoices, down payments. They pay all the money up front and then the agency, the designer, the consultant delivers the work, client pays up and then really the responsibility is down to the client. The client takes all the risk. And then, but the problem for the um, developer, designer, the person who delivers the, the work is they've then got to go and find another client, do another job, and the whole thing goes round and round in circles. And how many of us know people who've bought a website, spent tens of thousands of dollars on it, and, and it does absolutely nothing, it bombs, and they have to do the same thing again? There's got to be a better way. So we're trying to work out a better way. And uh, the model that we're looking at is based on joint ventures and specifically revenue sharing. And I'm sure you'll hear a lot more about this over the, the coming weeks and months. But I really believe that if, if we, as I'm here representing the uh, marketers, the people who deliver the work, if we invest our work on a different basis, so in return for a share of revenues over time, compared to... Um, the big invoice approach, I really believe that there are win-wins possible. Actually, the client benefits, financially the client benefits, by having a marketing team on board. So um, it, it becomes much more like an investor model. But in, instead of investing cash, we're investing our marketing know-how, our expertise, our work, our skills, and we're doing it over time. So I've got a, a little online spreadsheet that I've put together that demonstrates just how this might work. So take a look at this. So this is uh, my joint venture break even graph and this is the second version of it. There's lots of other ways we could look at this, lots of other ways we could cut it, but I just want to explain to you briefly how it works. It's pretty straightforward and I'll give you a link to this. And when when you get a link, if you go to the, the file menu in Google Docs, you can click make a copy. As long as you're logged into Google Drive, Google Docs, you can make your own copy and play with it to your heart's content. So the, the idea is, well, we're trying to work out, okay, if, if we or any team using the open source marketing client service model or system um, went into a joint venture with a client, uh, how much would the client benefit and Really, where, where would the break even be? Okay, so we've got some arbitrary numbers here. You can edit the numbers in the kind of whatever color it is, little pink squares, okay? Um, so we've said that we're going to start off, say the client's making $2,000 a month now in revenue or profit, doesn't really matter. And then what you've got is this natural growth. So by how much will the client's business grow every month after that? So. I put in 2%. This number actually doesn't really much matter. So in month two, they'll make 2040, 2081, and so on. So you've got a cumulative growth, and that's represented by this blue line on the graph. Now, the next thing is that we've got an additional growth. So in a joint venture situation, right, when you bring in that group of marketing experts to help you deliver, evolve your site, etc., and grow. Um, the question for me is, let's say the client was sharing like 5% of their profits with us or their, their revenues with us. What, how much growth would we have to deliver per month? And I thought that uh, it would be nearer 5% if it was 5%, but it turns out that's not, that's not the case. Okay, so the, the joint venture Growth is basically it starts off as the client's uh, normal revenue multiplied by, you know, and add add that extra one percent. So that's twenty twenty. And from month two onwards, you can play with this if you like. Then it's the twenty twenty. Add the two percent. Add the one percent. Okay, because we've got the the natural growth and the additional growth. In natural fact, it doesn't really matter what you put as the natural growth. It just changes the slope of the graph, really. But the, uh, the result's pretty much always the same. You have 4% and it, it goes up steeper. 
Um, so here's the interesting thing, and then this one is that value take away uh, our five percent. All right. So this is what the client gets in the joint venture situation is in the red column, and that's represented by the red line. This is what the client gets outside. We're not in the joint venture situation and not giving away five percent. So what's interesting here is, and then the uh, the delta is how much better off is the client. So in this instance, if we're delivering just 1% extra growth per month, then the client is actually no better off until month six. But after 24 months, they are then earning you know, $1,000 a month more than they would have been otherwise. And you can change these numbers to your heart's content. If it's like 5,000, starts at 5,000, you can, you can mess around with these. But really, what happens is always, always the client starts off maybe slightly behind but this gap between the red and blue lines emerges pretty quickly and it keeps on getting bigger and bigger and bigger so I think this is a little simple mathematical proof to say that joint ventures make sense and the next question we need to be asking is well if the client were to uh, pull out of the JV at any point um, let's say they thought that, that actually they'd make more um, not giving away that 5% or, or whatever it is then you know how long would it for how long would, would they be better off and I think but looking at this graph um, I think we'd uh, you know pretty much agree that the you know it, it makes sense to to stay in that kind of relationship so for me this is really really exciting because I think this really points to a very very exciting model for the future one other thing that I find really inspiring about this is that by shifting from a um, the basis of you know what can you afford to pay into instead being um, taking an, an investor posture then it puts the onus on on the marketers really to do their diligence and really to test the strategic fitness of a project before we start right so that the the best projects get built whether or not the client has cash in the bank right? why should it be just the people who've made some money in some other way or can access some money in some other way why should it be those people who get their projects built why shouldn't it be the best stuff the stuff that's going to change the world make a difference to people's lives and uh, so, yeah, all extremely exciting. So I encourage you to click the link, make a copy of the document, have a play for yourself.